built up, haven't they? Communities, I mean, almost tribes, right, of, of people whose, whose media lives are spent watching that material. Yes, that's right. I would distinguish a little bit between them. Uh, MSNBC is uh, somewhat more professionalized in its news coverage than Fox. Fox uh, struggles sometimes with uh, putting conspiracy theories on the air and having to apologize for getting the facts wrong and so forth. MSNBC is uh, done better in meeting journalistic standards over the last five years. That said, they do have the kind of audience that you just said, Owen, and uh, it and it is worrying in exactly the way that my colleagues in this program have been talking about. But I was pleased to hear Helen Margots say that this is not new. Uh, we certainly had bubbles in the 19th century in the United States in which people read a newspaper that just repeated the positions of their parties, uh, conspiracy theories about Roman Catholics and so on. So this is a feature of uh, human life, I think, not just of the last few years. Yeah, and, and Ros Taylor, here in the UK, it's, it's not possible to have that kind of opinionated TV. It's, it's, it's regulated so that it's much more difficult for TV stations to be quite as opinionated as they are in the United States. Does that make it, you know, do you think that makes a difference to British political life? Historically, it has. I think one of the incredibly striking things out about this election has been the way that Labour, some Labour supporters, not all, but some Labour supporters have come to distrust the mainstream media. And they have uh, spread what are called memes, uh, things that are designed to be viral and pictures and so on, uh, accusing the mainstream media of bias. And the interesting thing is that Labour have not necessarily needed to spend much on advertising because outlets, very small scale but very effective outlets, have spread have um, started up which are very pro-labour. One example is the Canary, which uh, which uh, its content is shared very, very extensively online and it's ext instinctively labour. And this provides people with an alternative media, if you like, which is telling them often that the mainstream media is sometimes even evil. And, I mean, yesterday you saw people posting pictures on social media of themselves burning copies of The Sun and Mail... I saw friends of friends writing on Facebook that maybe the media should be banned from reporting before elections. Oh, really? For, a, say, right. a week or so, which I found pretty terrifying. Um, and there has been, uh, in, particularly on the left, a, a visceral, dis growing distrust of the ability of the mainstream media to uh, reflect Labour's policies accurately. So, Helen Margots, can you reflect on that a bit for us? When you monitor all this online activity, are you seeing this hostility that we've heard about from France and here, uh, hostility to the mainstream media? I think, I think Ros is right. What we, what, what this election will also be remembered for is perhaps the the, the final kind of um, chasing away of the tabloid press demons that have been so influential in previous elections. Um, 92, in 1992, for example, there was a lot of discussion, you know, was it the sun what won it with their kind of vicious headlines, um, attack headlines so, a, 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 against Labour. Helen, I'm just going to break in and just sort of just to give it a context for our international audience. The British tabloid press is famously um, robust and it <laughs> uh, is uh, famously, uh, most of it, the vast bulk of it is, is very pro-conservative and very aggressively so. So, right. That's what you're trying to say. That's that's exactly right. Sorry, I should have explained. And uh, what what we saw in this election, I mean, for a long time, the 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 the, the traditional press has had a sort of quite a symbiotic relationship with social media because, of course, they are disseminated very widely on a wider audience. You know, to people who don't even buy the newspapers. You know, the headlines, etc. So, in that sense, they reach a wider audience. But I think we saw some really interesting examples of just ordinary people fighting back on social media. And you realised also, I mean, there was a particularly particular headline that the Daily Mail ran the day before, um, uh, the day before the election, which was, you know, apologists for terror, um, uh, and 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 it had a picture of Diane Abbott and 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 Jeremy Jeremy Corbyn, Labour the leader, leaders. and yeah. Di Diane yeah. Di Diane Abbott, the shadow Home Secretary, who'd had a several disastrous interviews, um, and. 
by the simple measure, I mean, the Labour Party announced that morning that Diane Abbott was stepping aside and that she wasn't there. So already this headline was completely irrelevant, but it was out there that so that everybody could see. And it rather highlighted this kind of, you know, social media is in real time and these tabloid, uh, these tabloid headlines aren't. And the same thing on mm. the on the actual day of the election, the Sun had the this uh, had uh, the Sun had a, a front page with Corbyn in a dustbin. It said Corbyn and a terrible picture of him in a kind of dustbin. Um, and a few people had photoshopped shopped that and replaced Corbyn with Theresa May. Um, and again, you know, it was a kind of fight back against some uh, an institution that has traditionally been extremely influential in right. British ele- elections. So just to be able to understand what you're saying, you, you're, you're basically saying the tabloids. Are, are less influential than they used to be. I yeah, I wouldn't say that they've compl- uh, they haven't disappeared from the landscape um, by any means, but I definitely think we've seen a really strong challenge to them in this election. Ros, you're trying to say something. Yes, I think they have been a real challenge to them, and that in a way is healthy. It's great to see a more pluralistic media, to see more outlets bringing up. The question is, do people know? who is behind the stuff they're sharing on social media. Sometimes they share it without even reading the article itself, for example, without watching the clip. And there are outlets which are not transparent about their ownership. One is Sputnik, a uh, Kremlin... (coughs) Excuse me, a Kremlin... um, sponsored outlet and people don't know who's behind it 